Dennis and I are charter members of the Miami grassroots organization called MDPL. That means the Miami Design Preservation League. Our friend and mentor, the late Barbara Bayer Capitman, created MDPL in 1976. She led the effort to get the Miami Beach Art Deco Historic District listed in the National Register of Historic Places. Uh, she began when the idea was extremely unpopular and unappreciated. It was very controversial to propose protecting and declaring as historic buildings anything that was barely or less than 50 years old. Miami Beach has 12 locally protected historic districts, which you can see here on this map, and even among them, four are the more prestigious National Register districts. The city has recently <coughs> added four of its districts as protecting the mid-century modern buildings, or Miami modern, which we know now worldwide as MIMO. One of MDPL's key strategies early on was to gain local ordinance protection for historic buildings, bit by bit, block by block, whatever we could get, when we could get it. Eventually, in 1992, the entire National Register District was covered by local zoning, imposing very strict protection among the toughest in the nation. Miami Beach's world-famous Art Deco District is actually four separate locally protected districts, added one at a time as it became politically viable to do so. When Barbara Capitman first came here in 1972, this is what she saw. This is the Delano, Ritz Plaza, and National. These are the three crown jewels of the Deco District in their 1970s colors. This is a section of Ocean Drive with the, at the extreme end, the Park Central, the Imperial, the Avalon, the Beacon, and the 1960s Sunray Apartments, and then the Colony Hotel. This is the, the 600 block of Ocean Drive, taken in a picture in 1976 you can see the shocking availability of parking spaces. <laughs> Ocean Drive, however, if you look closely, was a bit shabby, like Cinderella waiting for the prince to come. Now, the first tragedy in MDPL's history. Henry Hohauser's New Yorker Hotel was the first important structure to be lost. The League posted pickets every day at the demolition site, but so did the developer who was tearing down the building. The owners sent counter demonstration, and it was a farcical tragedy as, quote, friends of development, which were actually employees of the developer who was tearing it down, hoisted signs declaring Deco is ugly. Not too many of us agree with this sentiment. The New Yorker Hotel, designed by Henry Hoaser in 1939 at 1611 Collins Avenue, was finally demolished in January 7, 1981, after a year of protracted negotiation, feudal struggles, and lies, and backstabbing. <coughs> the loss of the New Yorker was devastating and galvanized Barbara Capitman's newly created MDPL. Then MDPL chairman Andres Fabregas, along with Barbara Capitman, decided to embody and immortalize that hotel in a new MDPL logo. This became the Fledgling League's emblem and symbol of determination and of beauty lost and yet to preserve in the future. A series of stunning graphics followed as part of a very clever campaign of image and style envisioned and launched by Capitman. She was the lifelong master of marketing and design, and she understood how to sell a product. Her campaign to save Miami Beach's Art Deco was nothing less to her than a product launch. Dennis Wilhelm rallied to Barbara's side since the moment he arrived in Miami in 1977. I became involved with Barbara's battle to save a 1935 movie theater where my lifelong passions lie, so I was happy to help Barbara save the cinema theater, and then I joined the fight. This was the cinema theater's interior before it was uh, destroyed, but then it was rather successfully recreated about 15 years later. It's still there at 1235 Washington Avenue. The original rotunda with its murals and chandelier now looks like this, which is definitely still nice. Here we see Barbara Capitman in 1978 enjoying a tram tour of the Deco District 
holding the microphone and narrating was her highly capable lieutenant and the league's first paid executive director, the great Diane Camber, who went on to become director of the city's vast museum for many years. Here is another example of Kapitman's marketing slogans on a bumper sticker. This began appearing around the city and it puzzled most residents. Here is one of Barbara's first brochures celebrating the Art Deco district. It's a little Peter Max and a little yellow brick road and note the centerpiece, the sole photorealistic element in striking black and white. She soon followed with this handsome magazine containing essays on the qualities of the district by respected historians. In 1976, Barbara Capitman's first book, American Trademark Designs, a survey with 732 marks and logos and corporate identity was published. It is still in print. It is considered the Bible of trademarks listing the designer and year of design for many popular American trademarks. So when Barbara poured all her energy into MDPL, she simply translated her vast knowledge of corporate identity over to the not-for-profit world. She recognized that creating a visual identity for MDPL would be an important part of generating awareness and support for the organization. Today, of course, we call this branding. Her next branded product was the Art Deco Week, which we are celebrating the successor today, this weekend. And what of Barbara's legacy? She has moved on to Immortality, 10th Street, right outside this wall, running through the heart of the Art Deco district, is now co-named Barbara Capitman Way. Before she left us, she told us that our next mission was to save the 1950s and 1960s heritage of our city, and we have moved on to do just that. Here are some of the great MIMO treasures in Miami Beach and throughout South Florida. The Cadillac Hotel, fine mid-century detailing, the famous Eden Rock Hotel with its Morris Lapidus colors, facade, and juxtaposed French Regency lampposts. Again, the Eden Rock's sweeping curves, oceanfront balconies, and unique metal regatta pennant railings. The world-famous Fontainebleau Hotel, Morris Lapidus Magnum Opus, and the site of James Bond's Goldfinger encounters, as well as winter headquarters for the legendary Rat Pack. A fitting place to end here today is on sparkling Biscayne Bay. This is the endangered Miami Marine Stadium, a 1963 6,500-seat 6, edifice by Hilario Candela.